Okay, <clears throat> per request, I'm going to do a video on how to get a HG 3G or a HMI monitor to communicate with Wind LDR or with a um, the PLC, the IDEC FC6A PLC. Um, there's a few things and little tricks, and there's a couple of problems I've ran into through time. I'll give you some tips on those in case you run into the same thing. I don't know that you will, <clears throat> but some things I've had to sort through. Okay, let me open up some of them and I'll show you. Um, okay. Okay, let me get them blown up here. I'm having to move them onto my bigger screen so I can see. Make sure y'all can see them too. I get wind LDR to fill up the screen a little better. Okay, with a new PLC. One of the very first things that I would do, the first thing you want to do is you go, I mean, if you don't have the latest version of the software, go here, check for updates, and it's going to take you to the IDEX site. All right, update your software frequently, or I do anyways. I mean, I like keeping my software update because you, you have all the newest firmware in it and all that good stuff. <clears throat> okay, and then you're going to have to go. If you have an older PLC that's been sitting on a shelf for a while, it may have the older firmware in it. So, <clears throat> is what you're going to do is just write you a little program or whatever. You don't even have to write a program, but go here to uh, you're down here on Ethernet. You want to change that to USB. See, I'd right here, Ethernet. Change that to USB. Click OK. Okay, so now you're communicating USB. You have to have the USB cable plugged up to update your firmware. You can't do it over Ethernet. So have your USB connect cable connected to your PC, to your PLC. <clears throat> okay, now that you've got it set on USB, you go to download. All right, download is going to pop up this box. Okay, you want to make sure this box is checked, download system software. Okay, if that's not checked, you're not going to update your firmware, so you need to make sure that that box is checked, download system software. Okay, I'm not <clears throat> hooked up to a PLC, obviously, right now, so it's not going to let me download to the PLC. But that's how you would do it anyways. And then communication settings, USB, that's all you need to change, USB. Okay, and this is just another way to get to where I showed you from down here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to hit OK, like I said, because I don't have anything to transfer into it. I don't have a uh, PLC hooked up. Okay. <clears throat> now, you want to basically do the same thing for this. Move comm set up. Make sure you're on USB. Okay. See, I did that. Comm set up. USB. Okay. online click OK it's asking you to save it we'll say yeah yeah we'll save it okay now the same thing comes up here you have to be connected USB to the actual HMI you can't do pass through or none of that stuff that I know of anyway I connect directly to the HMI when I'm updating the firmware and directly to the PLC when I'm updating the firmware Okay, same thing here. Download runtime system. Make sure that box is checked. That's what puts your firmware in. And then click download. And it will put the new firmware in there into the HMI for you. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to download because I don't have it hooked to an HMI. I'm going to click cancel. But you would click download. <clears throat> okay, one thing that I've noticed on my PC. It's not going to show it here. But 
I'll go into uh, if I'm having trouble with it connecting, I go to device manager. It's just something you might have to run into, okay? When I pull up device manager, when I come down through here, it's going to have your ports. It might be under here, or it might be other under. Uh, let's see, I think it's under other devices, maybe. It'll either be under USB devices here or under ports. I think it pops up under ports when you're clicked into a PLC and it'll have your COM numbers here. Okay, it's what my machine does sometimes, it'll actually marry that port to the PLC and it won't let me use it. So I have to physically come in here and right click it and go uninstall device, plug the USB back in so it sees it again and then it'll communicate. Just you might not have to do that for some reason. My machine makes me do that sometimes. My, my PC does. I don't think it's the actual HMI or the PLC that's doing it. <clears throat> okay, now as far as going in and setting up communication between the two of them now. Okay, let's start with the, once you have your firmware in, you can go in there and set up communication between the two of them. Okay, configuration, network settings. Okay, this is where you're going to see this is the actual default IP address of your PLC. This is where you can come in here and change this IP address if you want to. Okay. Just so you know that part. Okay, now we come down here. Again, USB. Let's change this to Ethernet. Okay. And then click OK. Now you're communicating Ethernet. Okay, now you want to go into here. This is the HMI program. Configuration, project. Double click that. It's going to pull this big dialog box up with all these tabs on it. Okay, communication interface. Go underneath Internet. Okay, you click on the Internet. There's the default IP address for your HMI. So when you're communicating with your HMI, you're looking at 192.168.1.6, and you can change this as well to your own custom IP address you want to. Okay, we're going to go to protocol one. We're going to change that. This is under Ethernet. This is the first thing we're going to go with. All right, external device communication one. Okay, that changes this to external device communication. I want this HMI to communicate with an external device. Okay, and don't click OK yet and get out of there. Now, external device communication, you want to go into here now. That's the communication driver. Go to IDEC. Okay, you want to IDEC, it populates all the rest of this stuff here. Make sure and change this. This is a common mistake. I, used to, I, I still do it all the time. I forget to change this. And my PLC won't communicate, and I'll start wondering why, and finally I'll remember to go back over here and do this. But this is default RS-232-485. You need to make sure that says Micro Smart FC68 Ethernet or OpenNet Micro Smart Smart Access Pro Lite. I've not used the FC6A one. This is the one I've always used, but I'm sure that the micro since you're Communicating with an FC6A from this HMI, I'm sure that one will work also. Okay. <clears throat> Communication driver network. All right. You have to come into here now. External device communication one. See, I changed that right there. Uh, it populates in. This is what this HMI is communicating with. It is communicating with 192.168.1.5, which is your default IP address for your PLC. Okay. And uh, there's all kinds of other stuff you can do in here if you want to play around with some of it. But this is actually how you set up the whole thing for your whole HMI. Pretty much. I mean, it's got your name and all that stuff, but that, we're more or less talking about communications. Okay. Click OK. Now, you might have to power it off, power it back on. Sometimes I've had to do that, but you should be communicating then. And also, if you're uh, 
going through a switch to check you can also go in to your HMI here home target info see I'm not hooked to anything right now so my target info is going to come up not any good okay but if you're actually connected and you have a good Ethernet connection between your PC and the HMI and a good internet Ethernet connection between your PC and your PLC through the switch then target info will pull up and it'll tell you everything about your HMI anyway I think that's about all the little things I know about it I have a um, a uh, console that I built let me see if I can pull up a picture of it real quick give you some ideas of uh, what you might do to um, uh, this is a console I built for proofing PLC programs as much as teaching myself how to do a lot of PLC programs. I've learned a lot of things on this this uh, console that I built and I built this just purely for fun something to screw around with here at the house and try different programs and work my way through the book and figure out how to do other things and I've the classes have taught me a lot from iDeck but this right here is invaluable if you take your if you go to that class I, I've I talked about in one of the videos and you get the HMI and you get here's what the inside of it looks like that's a mess it's not finished in this picture but you get the PLC, HMI, get you some buttons off of eBay for cheap, and some terminal blocks and whatnot, and just hook it all up and have a good time with it. And you can start adding stuff to it, like Ethernet cards. You can start adding Ethernet switches to it, uh, wireless gateways, all kinds of stuff, and learn a lot about PLCs that way. I mean, honestly, if you get really interested in it and you have something you can put your hands on like this, it really gets you interested in it, or it did me anyway. <clears throat> anyway, just ideas for you. Anyways, I hope this video was useful to somebody out there. Um, if you have any troubles with this, uh, it's hard for me to diagnose symptoms or whatever, but uh, IDEC tech support is really, really, really good. And they'll, they'll, they'll walk you through everything and check everything out, and it's just it's, uh, one 800 I deck, I think, or something. You have to look on their website. But anyways, their their customer support is phenomenal. If you haven't, if you're still having communication issues, get a hold of them, and they can they'll they'll help you out within a matter of minutes. Anyways, thank you for your time, and tell your friends, and tell them to subscribe. Thank you.